Hello friends, I am Shola Mike Agbola. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of delivering a paper at an edition of the renowned gospel film festival, GoFest. The paper was titled, The Future of Gospel Films in Nigeria. To the glory of God, the paper elicited a lot of responses and generated a discussion that culminated in throwing a huge challenge at all participants. Since then, my life as a gospel filmmaker has experienced a dramatic positive shift. I have a leading to share this paper with fellow gospel filmmakers on this forum. I'm sure we are in for a swell time. I'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. The best way to start would have been a detailed historical overview of gospel films in Nigeria. However, time constraint will not allow me this luxury. I therefore crave your indulgence to allow me to bypass the historical route and boil this discourse down to its very essence. Nonetheless, for the sake of the records, it must be stated that the emergence of Christian drama in Nigeria dates back to as far as 1944, when the late Hubert Ogunde staged a biblical opera titled The Garden of Eden. In between that time and now, a lot of water has passed under the proverbial bridge. Purely evangelical drama groups and ministries eventually emerged on the scene, especially between the 1970s and 1980s with powerful stage productions. After years of traversing the length and breadth of the country and impacting lives for Christ, drama groups and ministries in Nigeria diversified into gospel filmmaking in the 80s. This move was born out of necessity and prophecy. Yes, the necessity to reach a wider audience and the fulfillment of prophecy that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations. That is Matthew 24 verse 14. The Bible in Job 8 7 says, Though your beginning was small, your latter end will greatly increase. Indeed, the beginning of gospel films in Nigeria was small. You won't be wrong to call gospel film producers a generation of miracle workers. The reason for this submission is not far-fetched. Like God, who created the world out of nothing, this species of filmmakers have been able over the years to make something out of nothing as they produce commendable films without the basic ingredients needed for good movies. The beginning was characterized by little knowledge about filmmaking, incredibly small budget, untrained actors and actresses, and so on and so forth, except for a few productions that enjoyed public acceptance. Most movies from the stable of gospel filmmakers were known only within the Christian community. Perhaps the technical and artistic impulse were not good enough to attract patronage from the non-sentimental general public. It must be mentioned that the early movies, though lacking in standard technicalities, the messages in them were divinely inspired and heavily anointed. For long, gospel films in Nigeria have ridden on the crest of popularity within the church community. They have thrived on patronage predicated on mere sentiments by church people. However, movie watchers throughout the world, including Christian viewers, have become more intelligent, more discerning, and more selective than ever. They abandon poorly produced movies on the shelves and go for only high quality ones. This is enough a challenge to us, Christian filmmakers, to do away with hastily produced wishy-washy productions and become incurable addicts of excellence. Someone has rightly said, and I quote him, doing things the same way and expecting a different result is another definition of madness. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I must add, 
If you want to be newsworthy, do things that are noteworthy. If our movies must move from Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria into the uttermost part of the earth, then we must do things differently. We should not allow the euphoria of the relative successes of the past to becloud our eyes to the magnitude of tasks ahead of us. With all sense of modesty, I wish to submit at this point that in spite of the initial challenges, God has helped gospel filmmakers in Nigeria to advance over the years. Our visions are getting brighter, our productions are getting better, our audiences are getting wider, our impacts are getting bigger, all to the glory of God. Without any doubt, we have left the shore, but we have not reached our destination. We have invaded the land, but we have not conquered the land. We have left the past. We are in the present and we look forward to the future. I'll be back in a moment. Advancing into the future. The English dictionary defines the word future as time to come. While I am not disputing the correctness of the definition, I wish to state that a lot of people have entered into the future unprepared because they erroneously believe that the future is farther away than they think. It was Albert Einstein, the German-born American physicist, who said, I never think of the future. It comes soon enough. Indeed, the future is here. For gospel filmmakers not to be caught unawares, I admonish us to see the future as just a second away. Come to think of it, one second is as much in the future as one year is. After all, 365 days are nothing but a culmination of many seconds. On the strength of the argument above, I challenge fellow filmmakers not to be deluded into thinking that the future is far away. As we take giant leaps into the future with a view to making better movies, I wish to equip us with a few hints on the ingredients of a good movie. The following are some of my findings. I believe you will find them helpful. It must be stated at this point that I am not a professional in this field. I am just a beneficiary of divine grace. However, since the Bible says faith without works is dead, I decided to add works to my faith. This I did by engaging in intense research on film productions to equip myself. I read books, I browsed the internet, I attended seminars, I asked questions. In short, I did all and I still do all to learn what I need to make a full proof of my calling. I strongly recommend that every filmmaker who desires to be future compliant must take the words of Martin Scorsese seriously. The American filmmaker said, I always tell younger filmmakers and students, do it like the painters used to. Study the whole masters, enrich your palette, expand your canvas. There's always so much more to learn. In other words, no man is an island of knowledge. We keep learning from one another. There is a debate which is known as the star debate. Some people are deluded into thinking it's the magnetism of the stars in the movie that makes it a hit. Nothing can be further from the truth. The motion picture series, Lord of the Rings, produced between 2001 and 2003, had no superstars. What drew people to this movie was the sheer enormity of Peter Jackson's, that is the director's vision, his budget, and the fact that he was tackling a literary masterpiece. People were curious to see how he did it. In Star Wars, produced in 1977, no one in the entire cast, except Sir Alec Guinness, was a big household name, yet it thrived in the box office. Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ, produced in 2004, did not feature stars, yet it was a huge box office success. Now, the question is, what are the ingredients needed for a good movie? In actual fact, Two things make a movie a hit. These are, one, the power of the story, and two, the film's production values. The production values include scripting, acting, locations, costumes, props, makeups, camera work, lighting, sound, editing, and a host of others. 
in a short while, we'll be going through some of these items. I'll be back in a moment. You are welcome back. Let us begin with the plot. The plot is the most important part of the movie as it is the skeleton on which all other aspects of the movie hang. Without a good plot, a movie fails to attract and retain viewers. Even if they were drawn to it initially for some reasons, people will lose interest sooner than later. The problem with a lot of gospel films is that the plots are usually one-dimensional and they are often inundated with religious cliches. This makes them unacceptable to non-Christians. A well-plotted gospel movie should not be churchy in presentation. It must not be packaged like a sermon. If Bible references are unavoidable, they should be sparingly used. The unwritten rule is this, never attempt to preach at your viewers. Personally, I prefer to paraphrase scriptures in my productions, to uh, reading through Bible passages as if I'm preaching a sermon. Let's look at the second matter here. Second ingredient, actors. We need good actors to make a good movie. What exactly qualifies as good acting? It is when you don't see the performer acting. The main thing is that you are made to believe that you are watching a person actually going through that experience. Actors who can justify the characters and make them come alive in front of the audience are qualified and classified as good actors. They must be able to portray the characters so well that people who say that the characters are made keeping them in mind. They should blend themselves into the characters. Gospel filmmakers are doing relatively well in this regard, but there is always room for improvement. Educative. A good movie should be able to let us know something new, or at least remind us in a new way of something which is already known. Nowadays, movies are considered to be one of the most effective educational tools used to teach or educate people regarding certain issues. In short, a good movie should have some educative value for the masses. It must also provide some elements of encouragement and inspire people towards successfully overcoming barriers. Aside teaching biblical principles, which is its main aim, a gospel movie must also fulfill the societal mandate of educating its teeming viewers about basic issues like patriotism, menace of AIDS, uh, evil of corruption, dangers of abortion, and so many other things like that. This can be subtly treated without losing track of the main theme of the production. The next ingredient is emotional impact. A good movie must move the viewer. It absolutely has to make the viewer feel something. Whether it is excitement, fear, encouragement, resentment, love, anger, whatever it is, it has to get to them on the emotional level. It should touch the heart and make them talk or think about it instead of just glossing over it. It should have the capacity to teach and inspire the viewers and provoke them emotionally. It is a disaster if after watching your movie, the audience remarks, what was it all about? Suspense. Francisco Raguero, a Spanish filmmaker, made a remark at an edition of Cannes Film Festival. He said, A film must be alive. When this happens, it smashes, divorces, and pulverizes any synopsis, plot, or story. It speaks, talks, and explains itself. This is another way of saying the film was full of suspense. A film without suspense is dead. The English Dictionary calls suspense enjoyable tension that is a feeling of tense excitement about how something such as a mystery novel or movie will end. I call it not able to tell the end until you get to the end. It's been discovered that when a movie goes according to a standard rigid formula, viewers lose interest. The viewer should not be able to tell what will happen at the end of the movie. If they can tell what will happen, they should not be able to tell how it will happen. This is what keeps them glued to their seats while good movies last. 
stereotypes and cliches are the greatest killers of dramatic suspense. All things are possible. Jesse Lasky, an American producer, said filmmakers must have vision, must be daring, and must be patient. If gospel filmmakers would remain stakeholders and pace setters in the movie circle, we must take Lasky's admonition seriously. We must be visionary, daring, and patient. My motto as a filmmaker is, if it must be done, it must be well done. The 1997 film Titanic used computer-generated images, miniatures, and live-action special effects more extensively than any previous film. The special effects were painstakingly and professionally done that they did not make themselves obvious. Instead, they blended into the texture of the film. The result was so effective. It was almost impossible to tell that many scenes on board or in the water were actually filmed in a studio and not on location. Many images, including crowds of people on the ship, were actually computer generated. The filmmakers built major interior rooms such as the grand staircase and dining salon over a 19 million liter tank of water. The sets were supported by hydraulic systems that lowered them into the water to simulate the sinking of the ship. It was awesome. Gospel filmmakers can take a challenge from this. We must endeavor not to sacrifice quality on the altar of mediocrity. We must learn not to spare any resource to make quality films. A respected man of God said, There is no mountain anywhere. Every man's ignorance is his own mountain. I agree with him absolutely. The book of Genesis in the Holy Bible gives a succinct account of creation. In only six days, God made the firmament, the waters, the trees, the birds, the fishes, the animals, and many other things. The creation process climaxed with the creation of man. At the end of it all, God looked at everything he had made. He saw and acknowledged the fact that it was not just good, but very good. The Living Translation of Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says, Then God looked over all that he had made, and it was excellent in every way. God is an excellent creator. We must be excellent creators too. Word of advice. In our quest for excellence and acceptance, we must beware not to drift into compromise, perverseness, and obscenity, which unfortunately have become the stock in trade of some desperate producers. Some years back, our friends on the other side were fashioning their movies after a pattern of decency and moderation. Unfortunately, they reverted to their old order of indecency and have even gone a step further into disguised pornography. The reason is not far-fetched. They notice that some of us whom they saw as role models are abandoning the noble virtue of decency and are now trying to be like them. Beloved brethren, we can't afford to disappoint the one who sent us. We must always remember that we are called to be agents of change. We are called to be standard bearers. We are called to be thermostats, controlling the temperature of the environment and not thermometers, responding to the temperature of the environment. We must take a challenge from Daniel, who proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. I see a vision. Beloved gospel filmmakers, I have good news from the throne of grace. We can rejoice and celebrate because I see the glory of the latter house being greater than that of the former. I see God making us a name and a praise among all the peoples of the earth. I see God working a glorious work in our midst that will be hard to believe. I see God pulling us out of the dungeon of mediocrity and placing us high up on the pedestal of excellence. I see gospel films dictating the pace of filmmaking in Nigeria. I see progress. I see success. I see greatness. I see light at the end of the tunnel. The zeal of the Lord will perform this and it will begin with our generation. Let somebody say Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Before I go, permit me to remind you that you've been watching Evon channel on YouTube. To enjoy more edifying stuffs, please link up with this channel. How do you do this? Subscribe. Do that just after this show. And remember to click the notification button so that you can get notified of fresh uploads as soon as they drop on YouTube. 
Remember to like our posts. Remember to comment as they help us a great deal. I love you with the love of Christ. Bye-bye. <laughs>